Okay, today what we're going to do. my um, pinion setup installed and in, in, uh, 20 inch rolling torque see so yeah, I can turn that we'll set that up right there doesn't have to be I mean I can put this anywhere I want as long as the dial is touching and I'll show you that in a second where that dial posts on that arbor so we're ready to install this setup so these are my 21777-86 two of those against the 21777-1 arbor this spring-loaded piece here is what's going to go up against Let me go like this see how these discs fit where the uh those discs fit where the axle bearings would go or the differential side bearings would go see so we just get these set up in here. See how that's right like that, bam. That's right, see, cause that's how we're gonna measure as soon as we're, so we, we know we're touching that. When I come back, I'm gonna torque the um, bearing caps to uh, their specified torque and hold this operation in, then I'll set up the dial. Okay, we're back with our nine five axle here and um, we are got we are we have the dial indicator sort of set up here i've got my um, caps torque and this should be easy to rotate so i can move this in or out anywhere i want that's fine okay so what we want to do is we want the spring-loaded guy plunger on top of the gauge plate doesn't have to be exacto yet but the next thing we gotta do is preload our dial indicator 50 thousand so see i got about a right 50 there so I'm going to tighten this up because I'm doing this one-handed. Just a little bit here. We'll preload about 50, so that puts us right about zero there. Well, so right about there. Now, what I want to do is find my zero. So what I'm going to do here, a backup so you can see, is I'm going to go to my greatest point of deflection, which is pretty close to there, I'd say. Rock this off. See, I'm going the other way. 
I'll take this up just a little bit more here. Hold on a second. We'll pull this up. Go back to my 50 thereabouts. That's pretty close to zero. See, so going back and forth. That's too much. Okay, so I have to rock it now. This is going to be a direct reading. There we go. Alright, so there's my zero. See, pretty close to zero there. Now, as soon as I pop off, that's a direct reading. So, since that's a direct reading, get the glare out of the way here. I need a 47,000 shim. So, that's the shim that needs to go under the pinion. I can do it one more time just for fun. I'll pick up the plunger, put it on top of the gauge plate, make sure I'm at zero rocking here. Oops. Try to find zero. That's pretty close, see? Bam. So 47, that's it, we're done with that. I need a 47,000 shim when I press my inner pinion bearing in. Now, we just calculated that we need a 47,000 shim. Now, I'm actually changing housings here because the uh, housing that was originally in this truck was actually rotted out. Lovely Ohio truck. So, a, a different housing was sourced. So, one of the things I always like to do, especially if nobody's messed with it before, is I like to know what I took out. Now, mind you, that shim is based on the housing, nothing else. It's based on our bearings and the housing. That's it. It's not based on the ring and pinion whatsoever. Well, the shim I took out of the old housing was a 53,000. See that 53 right there? So that's pretty good. You know, I'm within six thousandths of, of what the other one was. You know, obviously you would hope manufacturing tolerances should be really, really close. So whatever I'm putting in, as long as, like I say, nobody has been messing with it, should be pretty close to the same of what I took out. So we will put the 47,000 in and do her up. Okay, I've got my opinion installed. Uh, since I've used new bearings, I think the spec is 15 to 30 inch pounds of rolling torque. I'm right at 22, which is perfect. So it feels good. There's no clearance. Like I say, a little bit of resistance. That's what we're looking for. So we'll go ahead and run this guy down. And we will uh, hook up our, hook up our um, roller in there. Oh, that's not a roller, the side adjuster. I'm gonna thread that in here. And then we'll set our carrier in there. Okay, so I've got my carrier half set in here. I did not put the caps in or torque them yet. I got my adjuster, took up the slack. Now, I measured this shim, and uh, the factory shim with this housing uh, was a 231,000 shim. So we're gonna start with that, and then I'm gonna adjust the preload uh, off with this guy. So I just wanna see where I'm at backlash-wise here. Now the spec's five to eight. Okay, and then this is a used gear set. This is, this is the gear set out of the other rear axle. So let's just see where we're at here. Looks like I'm at right at three. So I'm a little short by two, but that's no big deal because I'm going to make that up because once I run this up and then according to the service manual, we got to go three more notches that way. That is going to push the ring away from the pinion, which is going to open up my backlash. So we should be just about perfect here once I torque up these caps and, uh, and do this. So I'm going to go ahead and thread these caps in next and then I'm going to run this in three notches uh up which which runs that adjuster out and that should preload my carrier and give me my five thousandths to, to eight thousandths that i'm looking for in this gear set okay i've got my caps uh, and i don't have them torqued final i just torque them to 20 foot pounds just so i know i'm got the bearing cap square and i've got my uh, adjuster here loose i'm just using this punch i do have the correct tool to adjust this this is the kentmore j24 429 um so we'll use that here in a second but i'm just going to use this punch because it's a little quicker and like i say the service manual says bring it up till no clearance which is right there 
then we're gonna run that three notches over so I can't do that and hold the phone so we're gonna go ahead and uh, torque that three or run that three notches up and then we're gonna recheck our backlash okay I've got my um, a side adjuster here I ran it three holes uh, up which tightens the uh, side side bearings differential bearings so that pushes that pushes this whole operation away from the pinion remember I said backlash was a little too tight initially and now let's check see where we're at so what right there at six see five six yep so you're right there six to eight we're 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 dead nuts see I move the ring gear a little bit, obviously, so I'm starting at almost two there, but I'm finishing at seven, so that's about five. So we're uh, we're right there. So we will torque up these caps to 55 foot pounds, and our rear axle is set up. Okay, I've got the caps torqued to 55 foot pounds. I put my locking fork in there so it doesn't uh, move my adjuster, and I did a gear pattern check. It looks pretty good. Um, I like the blue a little bit better than the yellow, but you can see I'm right in the middle there. This is the drive part. This part is the coast. So, yeah, I'm right center there. I'm not too deep in. It looks it looks really good. Like I said, this is a used gear set, but that that's going to be just fine. So, there you go. There's a crash course using the factory Kentmore 21777 set. To set up a nine and a half axle uh, you'll see my video i set up a seven and a half a while back using kentmore stuff so pretty interesting to do it's always nice to have the right stuff or anything else you're just guessing because all the factory service manuals are written for the correct tooling so we're fortunate enough to own the correct tooling to do these jobs we do quite a bit of them so i just had a moment here i thought i'd show how you do it with the correct stuff